So today we will be looking at a lesson on reflection, translation, and dilation by creating a kaleidoscope using the geometer sketchpad. This lesson is in alignment with Common Core State Standard, CCSS, Math Content, 8GA4, which states that students will be able to understand that a two-dimensional figure is similar to another if the second can be obtained from the first by a sequence of rotations, reflections, translations, and dilations, given two similar two-dimensional figures, describe a sequence that exhibits the similarity between them. So the objectives of this is that students will be able to know what rotations, translations, and dilations are, and will know how to use these functions in Geometer's Sketchpad. The language function is that students will be able to describe what the terms rotation, translation, and dilation mean, as well as that students will be able to examine how these functions can be used in geometry. So now we're going to start to look at our key terms, which I've said, and they are rotation, dilation, and translation. Rotation is a transformation in which a plane figure turns around a fixed center point. A dilation is a transformation that produces an image that is the same shape as the original, but is a different size. And translation is a transformation of the plane that slides every point of a figure the same distance in the same direction. So now we're going to start to build our kaleidoscope. There's one that I had built earlier, but I'll restart for you. So, here, we're going to start building circles. And these circles, you notice I'm always coming from the center point. And that's because that is where we're going to start rotating. So we want to make sure that our polygon that we're going to be building on these points, or on these circles, not these points actually, um, we want to make sure that it has the same center point because we're going to be rotating at that point. So the next step is to put, put points on the circle. You might wonder why I'm putting points, extra ones on here. It's because if you notice this point, so the first ones that we put on, these ones dictate the, the diameter and the circumference of the circle. Whereas these ones that we put on, these secondary points, do not control any of the dimensions of the circle, but are rather, um, they're faceted to it. Um, they are reliant on the circle instead of the circle being reliant on them. So now we're going to create our, oh, we need one more point here on this first circle. We're going to create our polygon. So we're going to grab this tool, and we're going to start by clicking on every point. So we're putting a corner of our polygon on the circle. And now we have this thing going, but we want to just click again. So the clicking the second time will create our polygon. So now we're going to start rotating. We're going to rotate this. And so we want to double click that. So if you remember the definition, it says that a rotation is around a fixed point. And so that is our fixed point. So now we're going to unselect that and we're going to select this. And we're going to go to transform. We're going to go to rotate. And since I like a lot of shapes in my kaleidoscopes, we're going to do 15 degrees. You can do whatever you want. If you notice, this is how much it will be rotating if I change it to 30. It'll go 30, and you can do like 180, oh, not that, 180, and it'll do that. But I'm going to do 15. So there, I've got that. I'm going to go to transform again, rotate again, and I'm going to keep going. And I would do this until I go all the way around. And instead of making you watch that, I'm just going to go to a shape that already has it done. Now, if you see on this one, it's all done, and there's a lot of shapes, and it's a lot more circles, so it's going to be going to be a, a very effective kaleidoscope. It's going to be going all over the place. Um, and what I did here is if you right click on it, you can look at colors and you can select a color. And I like to mix it up so that the kaleidoscope, you can really tell whenever the shapes are changing and you can see how all the shapes relate to each other. All right. And so if you notice, the second set of points are gone and that's because I hid them. All right. And so I'm going to show you how to do that by getting rid of these circles because we don't want to see those when we're doing our kaleidoscope. All right, and now you might think, oh, I can just delete them. But I'll show you what happens when you delete. That's going to happen because your kaleidoscope is reliant upon those. You need to hide them so that your kaleidoscope, all the things that you've done, they're still there. You just can't see them. All right, so we're going to go to display and we're going to go to hide circles. So now we've gotten rid of those. And actually, we don't need this center point because that's 
It's what it's all rotating around, but we're not going to be animating that point. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of our points that are left, and these are the ones that simply determine it going around in a circle. And if you notice, we're doing this. Oh, it looks pretty cool. Getting our kaleidoscope going. What we're going to do is we're going to go to display. We're going to have this do it automatically. All right. So it's going a little slow now, but we're going to speed it up and kind of make our first version of our kaleidoscope. All right, so that's fun. But now we're going to make it a little bit different. Uh, going to go a little bit more in depth and uh, give it a different degree of difficulty by dilating and translating. So we're going to go, and it's uh, restarted, so I can show you how to do this. And now, again, we just need to hide all of this because we don't want this for this. It's just going to get in the way. So we select it all again, and now you noticed I, before I had gone into display and hide objects, but if you see here, it has the command H symbol. So if you have a MacBook, instead of going up there every time, you can simply push command and H. And there you have it, that's hidden. All right, now we're going to dilate our shape, right? And so we don't want the points because we don't actually want to recopy those. We just need those once so that we can do the animation, but we don't want to keep copying them. So we're going to go to transform, and we're going to go to dilate. The dilation, we're going to do it one to two. So now we have a half-sized uh, version of our shape. And you can notice that it's, it's equal, or that it's the same shape, it's just smaller. No. And so that's one of the important principles that we read about. It's that it's the same shape, it's just of a smaller size. All right. And now to look at rota or at translations, rather, we're going to translate. And we're going to move this one up 9 centimeters, uh, but we're going to go 90 degrees. So it's, it's up top there. And then, so we have that. And we're going to translate again. And we're going to go actually 18 centimeters. And we're going to go 270 degrees. 70 degrees, and we have it below. All right, and so again, we just see that translation, it's the same shape, but every single point has been moved up, in the first case, 90 degrees, uh, and it's been moved up nine centimeters, so every point, if you co compare the green point that's right here, you can see, and it's up there, nine centimeters, and then this one, the lower one, is well, it's nine centimeters from the first one, but 18 centimeters from the second one. And now we're gonna animate all of this, all right, and so we didn't need this point, if you remember, so we're going to hide that one. Now we're going to click all of these points. We're going to animate it one last time. Just see our kaleidoscope, which now has incorporated translation and dilation. And we're going to speed it up to make it a fun kaleidoscope. And there you have it, a kaleidoscope using translation, dilation, and especially rotation in this case.